Hey guys, my name is Mark from JazzGuitarLessons.net and welcome back to the vlog. Once again, there are a gazillion of videos on YouTube, you chose to watch that one, so I want to thank you and I'm gonna do my best to fulfill my mandate, which is to show you how to better play jazz guitar. So today, uh, following up with the last vlog where I said following up, yeah, that's hard for a French guy, following up. The last vlog I talked about, uh, at least one of the things I wish I knew when I was 16, to take my 15 year old self and go, hey you, do that and that i mentioned jazz harmony etc you can go ahead and watch this but for today here's part two of things i wish i knew uh, and basically i'm going to summarize this so it gets it's one of you know my raw vlogs which is here's the advice and take it or leave it it's play in time all the time and by playing in time i mean play in good rhythm and i'm gonna go at length and ramble uh, as to why it's so important, why it matters so much to improve your skills. And it's so simple. Uh, so is breathing, right? We just can <sighs> But we have to do that our, all our lives to keep, you know, doing our things. <laughs> and it's the same for playing in time. So here's what I mean. Whenever you practice something, whatever it is, it has to be in time so that you could record yourself and listen to yourself and then start tapping tapping your foot or snapping your finger, right? So I'll give you an example. I'm doing a two, five, one in G major right now. Three, four. So I was not even practicing anything, but even if you practice something that's written out and whatever scale patterns, whatever chord patterns, song you're practicing, even if it's only a matter of two bars or four bars, go and count yourself. Uh, uh, two, three, four. And actually playing in time is one of the three pillars I, I work on with my my people I do the mentoring, the coaching with, I work one-on-one -on -one with a very limited amount of people. So if you're interested in finding out if you can take your playing to the next level with that coaching program, uh, let's get on a call together. Just hit the link here or here, wherever it is on YouTube and book a call with me. I'm always happy to see what your challenges are and what we could work on and I can map out a custom plan for you so you become you know, ready to go out at jams and actually play, play jazz for real. Uh, that being said, uh, this is one of the things I push on my students a lot and I keep super, I keep on them, I supervise them through this process of always play in time. You practice something that's a totally new, play in time. And here's one of the reasons. I have given lessons enough to students getting to know their C's and G's and F, right? And seemingly when you give yourself all the time, like you go to C and then you give yourself all the room to go to an F, to an A minor, or to a G, it seems your hand will take that amount of time. And just flick on the metronome, or you have an instructor, like the teacher just counting in, one, two, three, it seems like magically the fingers make it there in time. It's it's very interesting. So the point, my point here is if you give yourself some slack, uh, your fingers will take that slack. So don't give yourself the slack, just have a, um, uh, some somewhat of a, time constraint, so always play your lines and your chords in time. I'll give you a great example that uh, actually I saw four or five of my private students in a row getting uh, a hiccup on this and it's a simply, you know, okay, let's do G major again. So G major and G major seven is like this. Do you see this on camera? Yes, all right. So G major seven, garden variety, pretty simple. It's a drop three and then let's go to a G six. So it's a very common uh, move, a guitar move to go like, to go from major seven at the end of a phrase to a six. I'll give you an example. I just played a two five to a D. It's very common to do that. There's a part that we're working on in the comping that it actually is going to a G major nine. So you take this shape, you take out the G and you put, you keep these three strings and then you put an A on top and it sounds like this. So that's G, uh, that's F sharp, B, D, and A. And then 
that constitute a G, you know, G triangle nine, G major nine. And then you go down to a G6. So the G6 is actually a synonymous for E minor seven. So it's E, G, D, and D. So these two, the, uh, these two notes stay the same and you hear this. It's a very bebop move, right? So, so my students struggle with the shift from one to another. So I just say, well, what you have to do is pretty simple. Let's grab our best friends. The man's best friend. Let's put a metronome at 100. And let's just see if you're able to alternate between the two four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I, I even missed a little bit, right? So now, I mean, in all the time in the world, I mean, come on, man. If you can't switch in time after four beats, it's because you don't prepare yourself early enough. So you could do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Well, you know, give yourself a full two beats. Then after you can do that, how about two? Go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? And after you're good at that, go for Charleston's. Uh, uh, two, three, four. Which is what we're working on actually in my group coaching program so doing this a lot does two things no, number one it sorry about that number one it, it allows you to play in time because when you get to play with people with a band or jam sessions you're going to play in time when you hear records you're trying to transcribe something you're going to play in time when you want to record something you're going to play in time play with a singer play in time play you know you always have to play in time so why not practice in time it's fine if you're just getting to know the chord shapes but that's like 1% of your practice, then you get to playing in time. And um, what's so interesting, number one, you get used to doing the thing you're supposed to do. And number two, if you constantly play out of time, meaning you would play this nice two five, right? Oh, wait, uh, oh no. Uh, oh, wait, oh, oh wait, let me, be, let me do this thing. If you do that, and I call this musical Tourette's, uh, you iron in your mistakes so you're practicing stopping and starting over so it's one of the things you can avoid all right so that's my tip that's if i had 16 year old me in front of me that's what i would say it's like whatever you do man whatever as soon as you're pseudo familiar with it start doing it in time counts put a metronome do something put a backing track all right on that note that's it uh, please don't hesitate i'll put a link here again uh, book a call with me if you're interested in seeing how you and I can work together to take your playing to the next level. And uh, please don't hesitate. If you have any questions, comments about this, you can do, do, do so in the, the comments below. Please subscribe and like and share this video if you think it would hit the spot for any of your friends. And I will see you soon on the website, jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. See you soon, guys. Take care. Bye.